As someone said, the more intelligent the creature, the more dangerous it becomes. For centuries, we usually associated war and revenge with humans. It was long accepted that humans were the only creatures complex enough to wage war. But the great apes confirmed the error of that idea. Until the 1960s, we know very little about the great apes in the wild. That changed when Jane Goodall, a prominent primatologist, decided to know more about the possible social structures of ancestors was to study our closest living relatives, the chimps. Like most of the animals, might occasionally scuffle over food, territory and female, but true war in the sense, intact with all its violence, brutality, politics and tribalism, was thought to be a unique component of human nature. Perhaps then, it shouldn't be surprising that this notion was challenged by our closest living relatives. Our closest genetic relatives were uncannily like humans. They formed tightly knit social groups and complex political structures that were based on alliances and partnerships. Once thought to be strictly vegetarian, the chimps were discovered to form organized hunting parties that would carefully stalk and kill colobus monkeys as food, sharing the highly prized meat among the members of the hunting party. What scares me most is that chimps are the best representation of the primal, instinctual brutality that humans are unfortunately capable of, but is kept buried beneath laws, rules and manners. Chimpanzees, while showing uncanny similarity to humans in many ways, were by and large rather nicer than us, but suddenly found that under certain circumstances, they could be just as brutal. They are as complex as we and with a dark side which exists alongside their compassion and kindness. This isn't the storyline of a HBO fantasy drama, but real events involving chimps in Tanzania's Gombe Stream National Park. Primatologist Jane Goodall was renowned here for her groundbreaking studies of the native chimpanzee population. The fight can be over the expansion of territory, access to water, food and fertile females. The shorter in supply any these resources are, the higher the odds of warfare and violence. Chimpanzee troops are based on a hierarchical political structure. The highest ranking chimpanzee in a group is the alpha male. These males climb their way to the top of the chimpanzee hierarchy and the way they choose to do so can differ with the personality of the individual leader, while the females have their own hierarchy. The Gombe Chimpanzee War was a violent conflict between two communities of chimpanzees in Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania, which lasted for four years between 1974 and 1978. The only civil war ever observed in wild chimpanzees. Prior to this, the Chim community lived as normal with no striking events until 1971. That year, the northern Kahama alpha male, Leaky, passed away. As soon as Leaky died, they started splitting. Leaky seems to have been a bridge who was holding the troops. A huge and strong new alpha male called Humphrey, the second in the hierarchy, stepped forward to take over the group. However, he faced pressure from two boisterous energetic brothers, Hugh and Charlie. Humphrey was not accepted by these brothers who began fighting with him. Humphrey was able to intimidate Charlie and Hugh separately, but when they were together, he tended to keep out of the way. Threat displays and small fights broke out in the coming days. The other chimps began to follow either Humphrey or the brothers. Eventually the turmoil caused the chimp communities to split. One group migrated north while the other went south. Humphrey is the leader of the Kasakela group. Hugh and Charlie are his rivals, co-leading the Kahama group. The chimps chose allegiance based on who they had the strongest social ties with. It seemed like a peaceful resolution to the conflict. As to their numbers, the Kahama separatists consisted of six adult males, three adult females and their young. While the Kasakela group was composed of 8 adult males, 12 adult females and their young. This was an intriguing sequence of events as no one had ever seen a single group of chimps break off into two separate factions like this in the wild before.
After initial splitting, everything was fine. The two groups even interacted occasionally, but with time, the two groups began spending less and less time interacting, becoming more solidly isolated from each other. But as they spent more time apart, tensions rose. They were also less and less friendly towards each other when approaching the feeding station. With the males hooting and hurling sticks and rocks in a show of strength, something they had never done with the others when they had been in one group. At first, this was all just bluffing and trying to show each other who was more badass. But again, things were about to change. The conflict escalated in January 1974 when the northern tribe Kasakela formed a war party composed of six adult males including Humphrey and five others named Figan, Jumio, Sherry, Everett and Rudolph. And the war began. All the males came together and migrated toward the other group. It was the southern Kasakela community who would draw first blood. The war party descended upon the more peaceful southern group in the middle of the day as they were lounging in the bush. They first killed a male chim named Godi savagely and mercilessly beat him to death. He was gathering food from a tree at the time and the six ambushers ended up killing him. This was the first time that a party of chimpanzees systematically killed one of their own. Not only did they kill him, after performing the gruesome deed, they also started celebrating by throwing branches and screaming victoriously. They flew up and down trees, stumping the ground. Their screams echoed through the jungle. It was an undeniable celebration of bloodlust. Things only got worse. The violence did not stop there, and the Kasakala chimpanzees continued killing the members of the Kahala community one at a time. Over the next four years, the males came back over and over again. They systematically killed each male of the Kahala tribes. It was gang-style violence, teaming up on individual chimps one by one. By the end of 1978, all the males in the Kahala community had been killed along with several females. Possibly the most tragic of all of the killings was the one where an elderly chimpanzee called Goliath was the victim. He was friendly and peaceful old member, taking care of most of his killers at one time or another when they were young. It didn't matter. He was mercilessly beaten to death like the others. And eventually, only four male chimpanzees of the Kahama community were left alive. They were Hugh, Charlie, Sniff and Willie. The next victim was Willie who was suffering from polio which made him an easy target. Charlie and Hugh were killed next. The males then forced the remaining females to join them. Tragically, they raped several and killed some of the young. Sniff did his best to maintain his territory by himself, but he was hopelessly outnumbered and overpowered, and he too was eventually killed after holding his own for a year against the Kasakela. With the death of Sniff, the war was over. The Kasakela claimed the Kahama territory as their own, absorbed the defeated remaining rebel group members, and the Kahama was no more. This was the first instance of a non-human primate species engaging in a long-term war where they have systematically and premeditatedly killed one of their own. Everything slowed down and the war was over. Aimed the Great Gombe Chimpanzee War.